sir. I don't appreciate you speeding through the parking lot, almost killing me. Officer Bassmaster. Oh, wait, you're Bass Jesus, aren't you? I've seen you on YouTube. Yeah, you know, I think... Go ahead, speed all you want. I think there's a parking lot sale here I was rushing to. <laughs> no, you're mistaken. This is just performance tackle. This is crazy. Man. Wow. What's up? You're late. I know, I'm always late. But being late is always good, too. Everybody's, fashionably late. Everybody's fashionably late and waiting. All right, let's make it happen. <laughs> Where the party at? Oh, right in your arms. That's where the party's at. <laughs> Who's in there? Some crazy wizard looking dude almost ran me over in the parking lot outside. Did you call you him to, to come over? Or did you need to do something about that. Did you call him to come over? Oh, okay. I was like, how, like, how many times are you here and does he show up? Yeah, this one was premeditated. Pre okay, this What's was going on, guys? What's up, Vato? Yeah, Hold on, man. You're supposed to button up the top one. Hey, how was uh, how was your uh, your dinner last night? Did you figure it out? Yeah. What's up, man? Who are you? I wanted to get Seth Meyer. What's up, Seth? How you doing? Cal State Long Beach in the house? Yeah, I graduated at this point. Oh, that's true. Are you still rep the team? Oh yeah, all the time. That's cool. I still got a national championship with them. So. Oh dang! Brush your hey, dust off oh, your shoulder. Yeah, yeah, is that what I do? <laughs> <laughs> what are you up to? Nothing much. Designing the uh, the flyer for Fred Hall. This oh, year. what's going on with Fred Hall and performance tackle? We are going to be passing out this flyer to everyone that bought, purchases something at our show. So you're going to get ten dollars off. Purchase forty dollars or more. Sick. That's solid. That's always a big show. Yeah, definitely. So we're excited to hopefully get the the store going afterwards. Yeah. Cool, man. You're gonna have those fresh hats there. Oh yeah. We'll carry them. Flat You're numbers. wearing one yourself right now. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's cool. What kind of what kind of goodies can we expect to see at the show there? We'll hopefully be carrying the same stuff that we usually carry. Um, hopefully, if we can get a shipment of the Pearl Swim Baits, we'll have the Pearl Swim Baits. Half um, and War Baits will be there. Half and War Baits will be here. Uh, we'll have the I-Rods. Matt Newman yeah, with the I-Rods will be there. Nice. Um, most likely, we'll have Trout King. Okay. You know, taking care of the trout guys. So, we'll be able to... So, fresh water, needs, salt water, exactly. the whole gamut. We'll have everything. Dope. You going to be there? I'll be there. Probably the whole time. Look at that. <laughs> All the Seth, uh, Seth fans, come out and say what's up. <laughs> oh, that's a cool looking picture. Who took those? Some clown, probably. It's raining tomorrow. I think Monday we'll have some rain. You know? Do you talk about anything other than fishing, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, since we're on that subject, I wanted to get both of your guys' takes. And maybe even college national anger of the year over here. <laughs> um, that guy? Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, no. <laughs> just Congratulations. <laughs> Today uh, will be. Yeah, let's talk about, like, you know, I'm coming in here. I've never been bass fishing. I watch some guys on YouTube, and it looked like fun. What kind of gear am I looking at goldfish. as a beginner? Don't listen to that guy in the back. Yeah, he's... Tommy <laughs> says goldfish. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe in Texas. <laughs> that's applicable to our Texas viewers. But, you know, <laughs> let's say I'm a 12-year-old kid in here. I got limited funds, but I want to catch fish. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, walk me through the store here, man. Let's, let's, What's your go-to? Like, like we had a discussion earlier. We were tired and we were supposed to do the segment, but you're like, I don't want to do it anyway. Getting back to that, and I got a lot of other stuff to do. Then. Worm. Learn how to use a worm. Okay, show us a worm. Plastic worm. And we're gonna we're gonna get Markagashi's first. We get customers who don't know how to fish bass, and it's pretty daunting. You got all this stuff that catches them. If you can't figure out how to catch them on a worm, don't try to fish anything else. Cause what's the number way to catch fish is a plastic soft bait right Can you imagine fishing a tournament nowadays where you where they made that illegal Ooh, that'd be tough it'd be really hard 
Yeah, especially on this side of the country. Yeah. <laughs> Anywhere. Mm -hmm. Same format, but if it's soft rubber, ain't happening. Okay. Well, you know, you say that, and it sounds simple, but then I'm looking at this massive wall. Like, yeah, oh, these where are do you even? Base. Yeah, where do you even it's start here? It's like if you don't know how to use them, it's confusion. You yep. know, if they made an SD card, you'd be like, you could be good to go. Just like download the KVD Brent Erler Aaron Martin's, you know, media chip stick it in your head. Boom, you'd be an instant, you know. Nodule bass fishing look. I think I think too many people get caught up in the amount of variety of what's out there and they don't focus in on basics and it kind of gets them all spun out and you got to you got to build up confidence and start out and I try to narrow it down just to keep colors and keep it simple and less confusing. Okay, okay Kelly, question. When you first started bass fishing, what was the first thing you picked up? As far as lures, yeah. Well, we didn't have much choices back then. But you didn't have much choices. We, didn't but, have, we had very few right? choices. We had cream, cream worms. What was it? It was a little it, rubber worm. It looked was like a, a cream. It, 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 it was symbolized in, in, in natural color, like a night crawler. And With the had, propeller had, on it. They had a. a, a it was but natural color, and they had a black yeah. color. So, so it was a worm, was a rubber worm. That was all it was. Oliver. And they weren't. Put the camera on yourself, dude. You got to. Uh, here, here. Let me, let me hold you. What what was your what was your first? I caught you, my first bass on a four inch power worm. Exactly, Black because chartreuse tail. right everybody you know it's it. well because look we all we all we all go from like night crawlers to plastic worms right? Actually, I couldn't catch a fish on a night crawler. So <laughs> I tried, and then it just died and it stank. And yeah, this is all bad. So. But yeah, like like I said, look at look at all this stuff. It's confusion. And you know, to be honest with you, back when I used to fish with a, a guy, he yeah, fished. He fished with night crawlers and I fished with plastics. And to be honest with you, he caught more fish than I did at times, but I always caught the big back at the end of the day. I had to wait. But what was it on? A rubber worm. And just a simple worm. worm. There's a <coughs> robo worm for SoCal. The SoCal market's kind of been the state. Before it, it was uh, English Choice made worms. Now this is kind of, they're good. I mean, four and a half inch you could travel the world and catch bass on it if you had no idea how to so if you're looking worm, to just catch your first bass correct like you four said this is, this, is okay. this is beginner this is like you know we tell customers well i want to throw a crankbait i want a, a, a jerk bait well they all work but you better know when and how to use them because you're going to spend a lot of money and not do too well the only way you're going to learn is by catching and you can throw a jerk bait for a year and if you're not throwing it right and you don't catch fish you basically learned how to cast a lure. You didn't learn how to catch a bass or where to throw it, you know. So you need to get bites. You need to catch fish. By catching fish, that's how you learn better. Like Oliver, learning the big bait. How did you learn? You started catching fish on a swim bait. I caught tens of thousands of fish before I tried to exactly. catch one on a swim bait. Well, you got it's bass fishing. It's a jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> right? For a lot of people. <laughs> <clears throat> I usually get good at one form, especially if you get competitive fishing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah. you have to. I mean, when you're yeah, competing, yeah. it's a little bit. Back to getting back to focusing on basics. I mean, a rubber worm. Pick okay. three colors, right? I right. Don't know. Okay, Everybody so we, we, I mean, we, pick a color you like. That's the main thing. Is if if you like it, you're probably gonna fish it a little longer than if you don't like the way it looks. But learn any, how to rig it. Any general tips on color selection for let's say? Mm -hmm. I'm going to jump in right now yeah, because, yeah. to be honest with you, this is something that's a fact and, it, and it's a staple that, right here, a purple worm, hands down, has been always the norm anywhere you go across the country. Purple. It just seemed to be the color, the go-to color, and what was thrown all around until things got refined as, yeah. as, and water clarity. People started coming up with different ideas and trying to match the hatch as that went in. And then it got to a point where each lake, each regional area had their own specific colors that seemed to work better. But realistically, I've been in the boat many times and color didn't mean anything when they were chewing. What's more important to you know? I think is, like I said, how are you rigging the worm? Yes. That, that's what changes the way the worm looks in the water. I mean you know learn how to as a, as a beginner learn how to split shot rig a split shot rig it a drop shot rig it um you know like finesse carolina rig uh a, a tech texas rig finesse just means light light wire small worm light wire 
And then what changes that is, is, is fishing it in those methods, but then now they have the wacky rig, which is, means you put the hook in the middle. That completely changes the way that, w that worm looks to a fish. We used to think that was dumb until yeah, we figured then, out it worked. You know, I can see like looking back at how, how the way it falls may look like an injured or wounded bait fish. Or uh, when you're shaking it, the worm actually folds in half, and to bass, it looks like a crawdad sticking their arms up. Um, color, yeah, certain lakes, yeah, if they're on shad, they'll they'll get in a certain color. But like what Kelly said, I usually tell people when they come in three basic colors, and you can get different shades of something with browns, greens, purples. You could, you know, as a beginner fisherman, like I said, don't chase the color. You can get it's more learn the techniques, learn how to rig it um, in those methods. Um, and even from that in itself, with each method, there's a million different combinations, like a drop shot. You know, the depending on how you put, how how long the leader is from the hook to the weight. You know, is it is it, I fished them as short as two inches, as long as two feet. You know, that changes everything. The weight, you know, hook size changes it. Um, you know, and then you could take that, and then, you know, you wacky rig it. That, that again changes it. There's just so many variables. Then you have a split shot, you know, from the split shot to where the hook is, to uh, Carolina rig, finesse Carolina, which is kind of the same, but it allows the, the worm to, to um, you know, not be so connected to the weight, um, to a Texas rig. Um, now you have, you know, tungsten shaky heads. And I mean, that's still, you could still use a worm, you know, shaky head or a lead head or a darter head. I mean, but it still is the same worm. All you're doing is changing the method in which you're fishing it. And that's really understanding that. With that rubber worm, you could rig it, I don't know, 20 million different ways or more. It's endless. It's, 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 it's when, endless. When you think you have it figured out, there's yeah. always somebody doing something a little twist but on it, angle. you got to start <clears> somewhere, and a small worm is the best way to catch, to get your most bites. Bites. Yeah. Bites. Bites, make, bites, make cast bites numbers, or if you want that fifth fish, like you, you're in a tournament and you want that fifth fish, and you, you need that fifth fish. You know, the four and a, the four and a half yeah. inch, four inch worm has always so, been the go-to And you need to, like I said, there again, yeah, the tournament, but we're talking beginners here, let's not forget, you're just trying to catch anything. You don't Absolutely. care about catching first fish. Right. We're talking you're, about the you're, first You're, you're fish. like, I just want to get a bite, you know, and to be smart about how you're fishing the worm. You know, uh, if you get a bite, it's like, look, when you make a cast, it's a question. You're, I've tied this up. You're throwing, you're asking a fish a question. You're asking that largemouth, you know, do you like this? Three casts later, you just got three no's. So you better change mm -hmm. the way that presentation is. Funny, five my number is five. <laughs> that was five my, yeah, five, five casts. casts. Then I changed something. Uh, I go oh. three. I'm like, I'm impatient because usually if they're on it, you throw it out your bit instantly. Three, I give them three casts, right? Change it up. You know, at that point, if, if you go through five different methods and you're, you're going to learn how to switch really quickly, at that point, walk to another spot, move your boat, you know. Um, and then go through that again. You can also go back to that spot. You just need to get one bite. A bite's a maybe. You set the hook, the fish, you, and you, you actually catch it, that's a yes. Is that bass asks, answered your question like, hey, did you like my, my, my Texas, my finesse Texas rig? Did you like the way I was shaking it? Don't, yeah. Sweet. Positive feedback. Yeah, he just told you, yeah, I like that. Okay, well, I'm, oh, that guy liked it too. Usually you'll figure that pattern out. That's what it is. It's patterning. And once you figure it out, it's like you'll start getting yeses. And then when it stops, like, okay, what changed? Switch it up. At least you have some history now with your, your, your lake, your pond, wherever it's walking. So at least it's a starting point for your next trip, and it builds confidence because you can go out and catch fish. But you need to catch fish, you know. Um, it's always fun to get them on a top water and crank bait a reaction. I mean, that's, I mean... It's aggressive, a jig, but you need to start somewhere. If you get to the point where catching bass on a worm is boring and you know you can pretty much catch them anytime you go out and have that type of confidence, then you can start learning how to use something else. But, you know. Master the plastic worm. You got to have, you have some in, in point. variables, correct. in all the variables. Confidence. That's like the layup <clears throat> of fishing, right? Yeah, like you have that's, to be able to make layups. That's it. That's, that's it. Yeah, that's yeah. That's what you, you have to do, you but gotta, see, you gotta, but you're also we're more catering towards and focusing on beginners and people would more likely to be off the bank as well. So right. that being the limitations that they do have, unfortunately, close to being in boat, when you can move from spot to spot, 
depth and change your depth, especially when you're on the shore, you're limited. That's where your, your techniques as far as how you rig and presentation are even more important because you're limited of yeah. what you can do. So you have to pay attention to what body of water you're on, spring, summer, fall, whatever it is, because with the vegetation on the bottom, there's times that you can't be on the bottom because your, your, your weight and your everything's going right down into the weeds and the fish are having a hard time struggling to get to it. So you need to know what's going on before you rig or have an idea or once you get there you adjust as well. You know, weight, I, my rule is always go the lightest weight as possible, you know, unless I'm fishing deep water. But typically I go the lighter the better. And slow presentation with a worm is sometimes very enticing in shallower water and the fish just seem to just look up and they see it, oh, something very subtle coming down, coming down. And to be honest with you, the best thing to do is just let it free fall, and you would agree with this, and just let the bait fall and stop dead stick it, and the fish just come up and they just zero in on it, and they'll just come up and pick it up and they're gone with it. Yeah. And opposed to getting very, very, you know, aggressive, <laughs> shaking and what have you, a lot of times, you, I mean, you just throw it out there and just let it go. And I've caught some big fish, free spawn especially, just throwing out there weightless and nice. just sitting out there with a wacky weightless worm and just letting it go. But you know, you're, you're targeting staging areas too. I would recommend that for a beginner, a weightless, weightless worm or uh, a Nico type rig. I mean, that is ideal. Um, that, that's a go-to all around. Yeah, drop shot's good as well. Um, but then you're, you're going to build up your strengths and you're going to build up your confidence as well with that. But you have to adjust. That's the key. Right. You, the well, fish will tell you what's happening. Yeah. You know? And like you said, it could, you know, t Kelly's <clears throat> obviously really technical. And that's, you know, getting back to the basics that, you know, when you don't have the experience, you know, it's like, where do I start? You, you need five basic, uh, basic methods which are proven, which work. We all have our confidence things, you know, and some people don't like to fish basic basic worm methods because it doesn't come with the oh my god I didn't catch him on a 12 ounce <laughs> swim bait you know but bottom line is you can throw that but if you don't have the basic skills in the first place you wouldn't even know where to throw it the worm is still your number one way to get bit period it was always the highest highest uh, amount as far as percentages in the tournament field. Uh, yeah and all around yeah. Uh, most of the guys it was always the go-to most amount still is today and it's hands down That's year round the go-to no matter what level you're at beginner mm -hmm. professional yeah. in between novice whatever yeah. the plastic worm is is always yeah. going to be there anything you know. soft plastic and i want to interject and you know for the guys that are starting from the from the from the very beginning like all of us did the guys that had to fish off the bank in my opinion evolve into the most efficient anglers because you are limited yeah with your opportunities you <laughs> learn to make the most out of the limited angles you have from the bank from the limited amount of bites you pay attention to the smallest and most subtle details exactly and then when you get in the yeah. and then when you get off yeah. the bank you know all those things stick so the guys that jump straight into a you know a bass boat or, or whatever they miss a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, like with anything, when you're stuck at your local park, you just you just learn how to adjust. You learn how to present things better. You're better technically because you're 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 basically squatting in a bush and you're trying to make a short pitch under a tree and you don't have a lot of money and you don't want your rig to get stuck in the tree. So you get good at technical fishing. You get good at at short pitching. You get good at fishing in tight cover. You know, and you you understand like you know, without you know, knowing you, you know, you you have a tendency to to just get better with the mechanics of your tackle because you have to. You got to make the most of what you got. Correct. You, I mean, I mean, I remember going to the park in the morning and just you know, it, it, you know, hiking around. It's like, man, I got a little open. I'm in the bush and you know, trying to pitch a worm, and you better get good at those stills. Cause hey, what are you doing over there? <laughs> Because then what happens, you start losing all your tackle, or you make a bad cast and you just spooked your potential bite. You're like, oh, and then you're stuck on the tulies, and it can be frustrating, but... It forces you to be better, yeah, though. Yeah, it forces you to be better. Where if you get on a boat, yeah, you have more options, but then you don't really know how to fish angles and position the boat correctly and this and that and the other thing. Because it wasn't a struggle. Yeah. It's just easy. Well, when I boat position now, a lot of it goes back into my experiences fishing on the bank. Yeah. And looking for, you know, a certain feel... Yeah. Um, yeah. and it comes back from those positive you know um, well, that positive is, feedback you, you from the fish you basically trained yourself um, 
and you carry that with you, you know, so. It's yes. conditioning. Yeah, you condition you can, yourself. You conditioned yourself, and that's a good mindset to be in and, and, and carry that, but then also refine that as you go and pay attention on what you're doing. And that's one thing a lot of people don't do is they don't, they don't look back. They're always looking forward, but still look back where you were and try not to get away from some of the basics and some of the stuff you did 10, 15, 20 years ago. And you can really do well as well. And like I say, this all goes back to basics. I mean, no matter what. And, and, basics. and it's it's unbelievable. And it's, we, you know, trends and everything. I hate to say it. Everybody I mean, wants to hop on the yeah. board and get on the, get on. Well, I mean, we're talking about a bass fishing. You have to have the hottest, latest, greatest thing. Exactly. Like, but, mm, I mean, I'm in the industry and this is how I make a living. But, you know, it gets to the point where, you know, some of the stuff you see is just like, man, you know, it's, it's like bass fishing keeps selling itself, you know. Um, but a basic technique <coughs> is something you can learn for free. You know, that's what it boils down to is understanding how to use that technique to get that bite. You know, but you always have a base, you know, very basic techniques. Um, and then from there, as you get better, you learn how to fine tune those techniques and then change you know can't believe you guys believed all that spiel i made all that crap up <laughs> but let's going back to that let's pick those three worms okay let's pick three colors three four and colors. a half inch well, or so i mean like uh, I mean, and let's I'm, walk through the rigging like, kelly was talking about that that's one purple. You know, purple okay. um if you're Sit in the western united green. states you know stuff you know worm yeah. colors are regional uh, something with brown in it. Cinnamon, okay. anything cinnamon, in the cinnamon brown. Cinnamon, blood, looking, yep. you know, uh, these are kind of local here for us, uh, you know, for us here in the western United States. These, I mean, it's whatever it's called, it's kind of brown looking. Okay. Or something tone. with the good green, you know. Green, I mean, I'm just picking some worms. Everybody here, you know, Aaron's, Aaron's magic, that kind of stuff. But uh, basic, basic colors for for here, the Western United States, you can't go wrong. There's, and all there's, and all I mean, and all a, water clarities as well. Yeah, I mean, know? there's there's some other ones that goes on from there, but you know, basic browns, greens, yeah. you know, that's you can't go wrong with these. That's colors. pretty solid, and that's it's five just, bucks a pack. Yeah, we're just nothing crazy. Yeah, just keep it. I'm trying to keep it simple. I mean, you could somebody will say, well, what about this? What about yeah? There's a lot, but then like I said, we're talking beginners. We're not talking to somebody who's. Yeah fishes and travels around i'm just western. trying to catch my very first bass yeah here. For, and this will work if you're in this area you know if you're not going to your local tackle store say hey this is kind of every region is a slight there's going to be a slight difference so um, okay what do i need to rig it show them sir as far as you want to rig i would just go into initially i go into a text i go into texas uh, Where's your lead now? It's over there. It's all over here. Okay, so as we're looking here, um, like I say, for guys that are just starting out, on a size of a worm like this, I would be using an eighth ounce weight. It would be all around weight for this size of a worm. An eighth of an ounce is, is sounds doesn't sound like much, but to be honest with you, uh, you fish this with six to eight pound line, and you'll get bit. And typically, eighth ounce is a very small weight, but you can go up to three sixteenths if you're fishing a deeper uh, body of water and you want to get a little deeper. You can go sixteenth ounce weight too with that. So, okay, so I'm going to hold the eighth ounce weight. Cut. In, in general, okay, I'll do that, and then we'll, we want to talk about a hook now. We'll go to we'll go to the hooks and the hooks on the back side over here, unless he changes. I can believe that next question. Excuse me. I'm a I'm a Gamagatsu guy. Um, owners are great too. Uh, I started out, and what I still even fish to this day with even the finesse stuff. If I can even find if there's any even here. Um, I don't see. I don't have the small ones. Okay. Probably looking for what, a number two or something? I'm going for a number two hook. Yeah, I'm looking for it. Well, actually, here we go. We can do this right here. We can do, We can even go in the number two. We can go in. And I, I like, to be honest with you, I like the offset. 
I really like an offset hook because it holds the worm in place pretty good. Agreed. And I like that. I. Sorry. Yeah, so I like this, and this is what I started with many, I mean, over, I mean, gosh, forever. I, I use the offset as long as they've been making them. And, and then there's other hooks that you can use, so you can use a regular straight shank hook as well too. But these hold on pretty well. And I, I would recommend a hook of this style right here for finessing. Okay, and this is for the Texas rig that you were this talking is for, about. This is for Texas rig, and you can do even the, the, the split shot. You can do split shot with this as well. With the same hook. The same hook, and you can use a down. You can use a finesse Carolina rig with this too. Okay. Cool. You know, and dra and drag this. You can literally take. You could literally take this eighth ounce weight, and you can literally um, take a bobber stop as well. And we can go look for a bobber stop, and we can put a bobber stop in front of. Yeah. The, let's let's get everything we need to. We'll break to, it down to we'll, do a Texas rig, that light Carolina rig, okay. and a drop shot rig, and then we'll go and over we'll, the table. And we'll put it on the table, yeah. and we'll break it down, and they'll have everything in front of them. So now we got to get in. We'll get. Let's do this. Let's get some drop shot hooks, and then we'll. Um, oh, oh, we're right here. Let's see what he's got. And I see some offset drop shot hooks here from owner, right? And then you got like yeah, the are, mosquito cool style and, and the and split honest, shot, drop shot. You, to be honest with you, these are pretty good too. And I even do finesse. I'll do a finesse uh, offset as well. That would be cool right there. That would be really cool to do that. Okay, so we got that covered, and then we'll have a we'll have a round bend, like a we, nose hook. Nose hook. Uh, Where's the mosquitoes? Okay, well. I'm gonna go over to. I'm gonna go to these bombies right here. Okay. And then let's go over to get some bobber stops. And I believe the bobber stops are on the other side. So we have plenty of choices here. Um, Those are some fancy looking ones there. Yeah, there's some really nice ones here, some really good stuff too. Um, for weight wise. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go economical here. These are probably work right here. Sure I have some of these and I've used these too from time to time. Okay, and I'm even going to bring out a bead, some beads. Okay, and Can I'll make a necklace. I'll, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do with that. So now we got to go back to the leg, and I want to see if we have the barrel. And we do. Uh, like the mojo style. Is there any mojo style? But what I can do is I'm also going to get an eight ounce drop shot cylinder and I'll get I'm looking for like a mojo slip can we talk about the different styles of uh, drop shot weights and shapes too yeah we're gonna go over that too with uh, for for traditional drop shotting traditional drop shotting a cylinder type weight would be fine uh, you'll get less hang-ups on that it works very well and then um, I have the, the um, bullet, bullet weight that I already picked out and then we're going to go with, if he has them too, I, think I, I use a water grumbling. I used to use these because they were cheap from North Carolina. Right yeah, you can Carolina, you can Carolina with that too. In fact, to be honest with you, I'll pull, I'll pull that up and I'm also going to pull up some nail, the nail, the nail weights too. We can, we can modify and do, do some mods on that too. And um, and then I'm going to need a barrel swivel, small barrel swivel. Okay, so we're in business. We're all set on that. And then we can always, like I say, this is just for finesse and for starting out. We can do we can do just about. Minimal as far as with this probably 
minimal five, four to five different techniques for just what I have right here. How about fishing line? And then fishing line as well. <clears throat> well, cost effectively, um, you know, budgets, most average person, their budget's low. I mean, for me, I mean, Berkeley Trilene XL is extra limp. It's a great line. It's, it's economical. That's what I'm looking at, you know. Um, I would say probably the eight pound. I would, in fact, I'm gonna even drop it down to the six pounds if you really want to. If you really want to finesse, six and eight. That's pretty much will cover this type of a deal right here. So we're all set there with the line. Pretty much everything we need right now. Um, we can go to the to the glass counter or to the yeah. back end. Okay, so we have our worms. You got your line. What's the first one we're gonna go over? Hooks. Let's just go with the Texas. We're gonna start out with Texas. And Texas rig. is actually, it can feed fish many different ways. And I mean many different ways. Um, Texas rigging here could be dead sticking. You could shake it. You could swim it. And if I, I still, I, I still tie the trialene knot. It's like an improved clinch. It's a trialene knot that I've been tying for like ever, but now. Oh, what, we missed something. Where did you slide up the line there? So you took your eighth ounce weight? Eighth ounce weight up the, all right up the line. Always mm -hmm. the point, so no, the nose first, going up to your rod tip. And this is no, no pegging, huh? No pegging right now, no. Okay. And then, because we were gonna have the weight be free, and then we're gonna go back to tie in. Okay, so basically I, I'm going back to this trialing knot that I've tied for years, and it's pretty easy. And I just created a, a loop, and then I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, five. I go six times. Oh, really? Yeah, I go, I go six times, but I'm going blind. And the lighting here is terrible. You need better lights, Mark. You know what it is? It's the glass. It's the reflection off the glass. Never mind. So you always have to wet it. Why is that? Friction, heat. Okay. You're saying you're gonna get a weak spot in your line if you don't do it? It will burn. It will literally burn. And, and scorch and, and tear the line, the surface of the line. Okay. So, there we go. We have a hook, weight, and we're ready to rig a plastic on it. Okay, so now you got three colors here. Uh, okay. You roll up to the lake. Do you want me to? Do you want me to? Okay. Which one is you're gonna go? If I had to go, go to right now, I would just I would this would. Gosh, I'm torn. They're all great colors. You know what? I'm really partial to green still. Okay. But I'm also partial. Uh, I'm gonna go with the people's one. I'm actually gonna go with people's. That has been just a good staple. This time of the year, the fish will tell you real quick. I mean, real real quick, uh, what they want to eat. And whether they're not, if they're not on the bottom or not, mm. you know, are they looking down? Or are they looking up? Are they suspended? And that's what they tell you whether the Texas rig is going to work or not. Typically, Texas rig pre-spawn is bread and butter. Okay. That's usually a go-to. A Texas rig pre-spawn is the way to go. Oh, that's the first thing I would be throwing out there. If they're not eating it, then I would switch over and maybe elevate and, and throw a Carolina rig or a drop shot off the bottom. Okay. So, so where is the Texas rig going to excel typically? 
hip, that's the problem with Texas rigging. He can excel everywhere, anytime, any place. Mm. It doesn't matter. You'll have the flat side of the worm coming right on dead center. Come in. You're only going to come in about 3 16th of an inch. Come in, and then you're going to come in and turn, and you're pinching in the plastic when you pop through. And the key is to rig it straight. And then you're going to come in right now. There's two ways you can do it. You can actually skin hook this just on the side like that. That's a, a, a great method uh, to do as well, to skin hook it. Or Why do you want to skin hook it instead of just putting it right in the It middle won't take it? much, it won't take much at all for that to pop out and, and penetrate a fish. Really, really easy, okay? But if, if uh, you're fishing more like a lot of rock and cover and stuff, and you want to get a little more weedless and just be more safer on that end of it, that's what you're gonna end up with right there, okay? That's the key, that's the, that's the ticket right there. Streamline it and you're ready to go. So now what you have is a Texas rig. And you're ready to go. That, that right there, I don't care where you're going, that will catch a fish. Okay. And for, so beginner, you... for beginners, this is it. This is, this is the way to go, number one. That's the deal. Okay, now it's all rigged up. Uh, you got it on six, eight pound line, spinning, conventional, whatever you pick. Um, how are you actually working this? Well, I will throw it out. I will look and pick targets and throw it out. And this time of the year, I would be throwing it out deep offshore as far as possible and checking like areas if there's points, bends, and what have you. If you're on, you know, on a park lake or whatever, you have out uh, tree limbs hanging out. Is there a little point? Is there a rock pile or any? Maybe some somebody threw a Christmas tree out there. You know, you never know. Just if you fish the water enough, you might have an idea where you're at and what's there. You can actually target certain key areas where you would think a fish would be at, and and throw beyond that target. Let it free fall, and and just don't do anything, and just let the bait hit, and just wait, and wait and wait. And if you don't feel nothing, just pull it up. Reel a little slack in, pull up, stop. Dead stick. Okay, and you can try that method. And like I say, fish are going to tell you what's happening. They sometimes they'll come up and they'll peck it they'll, and, or they'll just slam it. If that's not working, then traditionally a shaking technique is, is really good for pre spawn. And when you're shaking, you're just moving the rod tip like this. And all you're doing is hopping the worm. You're just hopping the worm off the bottom. Just hop in the worm a little bit. That's all you're doing. And what happens with that, it's, it, it kind of resembles a crawfish darting and, and digging around on the bottom. And these fish will come up and they'll zero in on it. And when you're actually doing that technique, you're going to cover more water. But you're also going to find a more aggressive fish. And the bites are unbelievable. And when you get on a good shaking bite and pre-spawn, you can have it to yourself sometimes and it could be epic. And a lot of guys won't. A lot of guys aren't. Nobody does it anymore. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's the truth. But like I say, light the lighter weight, the better. As long as you go with it, the lighter the better. Uh, typically, this time of the year, no more than three sixteenth of an ounce. Um, if you're targeting shallow pre-spawn fish, you go deeper. You go four uh, quarter ounce to uh, five sixteenths. This is what you're going to do. Six eight pound line, and, and that's it. That's what I recommend. Nice. Okay, so that's the Texas rig. Option number two. Okay, so <clears throat> what we can do, if I, I can't cut corners with this, but I'm going to do this. <coughs> I'm going to do a quick. Don't do that, kids. Go buy some pliers. I'm going to go do a quick Carolina rig because since I've had that rigged up right now, I don't want to have to re come back and do it. So. This is something you saw in what I mentioned in one of my videos or two about the Carolina rig. So we don't have the barrel, the barrel swivel, but or, or the barrel, I'm mean, sorry, the uh, weight, the weight we don't, but we can incorporate, I can incorporate this same weight too. In fact, I'll do that just to let you know. And you can also use, you also can use these water uh, gremlin weights too. Or any cylinder type weight, lead, weight you can use and you can incorporate that you can also like i say you're on the water you're there you can still use the texas rig weight or you can resort to because these are more money you can just go back to the lead 
okay, vice versa. Either or will work, okay? Whatever's convenient for you. So going back to this now, this technique, we're gonna go in. So it looks like you're tying a leader now from the from the yes, hook and I, the bait. Yes, I am gonna. I am creating a leader, and typically 16 inches to 24 out inch is is just a good a good all around leader, you know. Remember, you're just going six times around. And you always make sure you got your barrel weight above towards the rod tip. A lot of guys forget and they tie it all up and they forget the weight. Mm. The weight's important, make sure you incorporate the weight ahead of the barrel. So now you, now you have a barrel, a barrel tied to your leader. What does the swivel do? The swivel is gonna, free, it's gonna let the bait basically suspend and uh, basically freeform itself and do what have, have you in a natural, more of a natural state. And it'll take all the line twist out and keep the bait more free and suspend and flutter. As opposed to a fixed weight, the bait's gonna be limited on what it's gonna do. So if this bait wants to, if you come up and you bump a rock or hit something, this bait's going to react a lot more freer. And the fish, it's going to look natural, and that's the key. You want a more of a natural presentation. This technique is just is good for covering water, covering if the fish wants something that's a little off the bottom, something moving, more subtle, but yet you don't have a weight attached to it. And uh, it works very well. It, I believe this technique came out, obviously came out from back east. The boys in the south were using it back in the, in the day. But I've, I've been using this for many, many years. And I guarantee you, you roll, you roll up at a park lake or you fish in local waters, nobody's doing this. And you're rigging that weight just bare, huh? Just weight, swivel, leader. Very basic, yeah. Charlie knot on all three knots. Just a Berkeley Charlie knot. That's all it is. I'm not trimming anything down too much. I don't even have cutters right now. But yeah, don't do that. <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, don't recommend. Fat for your teeth. Then recommend that. But what you end up here with is this is what you end up with, and that right there. That right there, guys, is, is just something that will flat out catch them. And, and just imagine just imagine this on the bottom when you're dragging. This bait's going to come and bump, and it's going to bounce up, flutter as you're dragging it. Hit cover, bounce, flutter. And those fish are going to come in, and you're going to see this bait hit, and it's going to flutter and come back down. They like to see that from time to time. Mm. Great, great. Great pre-spawn summertime tactic. I use this in the summertime as well. Springtime and summer is the two times I, I this really shines. Very good, effective way to fish. And you can use multiple types of baits on the back end here. Preacher baits, straight tail worms, flukes, little swim baits. Oh yeah, that's a that's another story we'll talk about down the road, but. You can't let everything out of the bag right now. <laughs> We're just going to lay out a little teaser for you guys. Yeah, show them how to shoot some free throws first. Little teasers here, guys. Lay up, free gonna, throws. We'll put you on the line and we'll, we'll see what you can <laughs> Put you on the line, we'll see what you can do, huh? Okay, so we're done with this. This is number two. All right, that's a solid option. All right. All right, I'm going to get you some pliers, man. Seth, pliers. Man, this I'm going to keep cutting with his teeth. I'm chipping all my teeth that I have left. I'm going to walk out of here toothless. <laughs> Okay, boys. Now, now we're gonna have some fun. All right. So we got two solid options down: Texas rig, Carolina rig. All pretty finessey. I'm gonna go now to something that started, I believe, originated in Japan, and it came out here in the 90s. 
and the Japanese were doing it. But actually, it was we were doing it here too. I guess it was used in the ocean. You know where I'm going with this? The drop loop action, almost. Yeah. Well, the drop shot. I mean, it's it's a technique that I've heard that it, the Japanese were doing it in fresh water before we implemented it and were doing it in fresh water, and then they started doing it. So that in itself. What's the fundamental difference here? Well, you're going to suspend the bait typically off the bottom and have your choice on how high of a, a leader you want to put and keep the bait off the bottom. That in itself, you know, given the time of the year, and like I say, the fish are going to tell you what they want, but you have your, you have your standards basically of what you, you're, you're typically going to be rigging your leaders at. Because time on the water will also will help and help dictate that. So what I'm going to do here, this is going to be a whole new, I'm using an, another type of hook and it's an offset hook too. This is a great, a, I like this style as well because there's two, two reasons. The way that this will sit on the, on the worm and suspend on the line horizontally and number two, when I hook them opposed to nose hooking, nose hooking I tend to get a lot more fray line and I have to retie more. When I use this style of hook here, I don't have to retie it hardly as much. And this and this will this will keel the bait. This will keel your bait so much better. Naturally, presentation is just phenomenal. And what do we got here? It's an owner down shot offset, huh? That's an offset. Yeah, that's a cool hook. I'm using I'm using the offsets as well. And I'm doing really good. I've been doing real in fact there's some top pros that are doing doing that I, I notice now. I've been doing it for many, many years and have had phenomenal. And one thing about it too, you can take this with a three out, four out, five out hook and put a bubba bait on here. What? Bubba drop shot. And what do you know? And what do you guys know about that? You know? So talk us through here. What are you doing here? You're tying the hook so on now first I went, this time? Now I, now I went through. I went through with the... I went through the tag in, tag in, and yeah, I went through com, coming leader, huh? coming up. And what I'm going to do is go back down in, right back down through the eye. And what I actually did is I doubled up my line. I've doubled up my line. And now, once I doubled up my line, I'm basically going to do a Palomar knot. Okay, a Palomar knot is simple, just a loop. All you're doing is coming back, you're doubled up. And what you're going to do is come right back up and come back through the loop. And now you have another loop, and now you bring the hook back through that other loop you just created, and you come down gently. But what you need to do now, before you cinch it, put it in your mouth, wet it. Now what you do, is you pull your main line that goes to the rod tip. Pull it tight. Now you have a cinched knot. But the problem with that, that knot is not laying. Is look at how that knot's laying. Okay. Now what you need to do to keel it and make it straight is I'll pull on the tag end a little bit and I'll go right back through the top with the with the barb coming up. And I'll go right back through the eye of the hook. I'll come back down and I'll pop it so now the, the knot goes right back inside the eye. Now it's facing up. There it is. We're, we're on a good, we're on a good, we're, on a, we're moving in the right direction. And then we'll come in with a cylinder weight, just a traditional drop shot weight. And this can vary. This is like an eighth ounce and it's a barrel type. And I'll do two things. Sometimes I'll tie even a little double half hitch knot on the end so I don't lose my sinkers all the time. Or you can you can just come in like this too and just pull both ends, pull both ends of the line through. It's a V. It's kind of a V groove here, and you just snug it up and pull it up and so cinch it right into the top of that. And there you go. Now you're fixed. Okay, so now you have. This is what you have now. Okay, and that's the deal right there. Okay, so now we're going to take and go right back to where we started. And we're going to go back to traditional Texas rigging. Same scenario. 
We're going to go right back in through the top. Come in about 3 sixteenths, a quarter of an inch maybe. Depends on the size of your hook. And then you can come right back in. You can skin hook it. I'm going to I'm going to come in and go right dead center though. And a lot of times like this, I'll come in and I'll come right back up and have that hook just right skin hook right on the top there. And it's ready to penetrate. It's I mean ready to go. You can just barely feel it. But I'll then I'll just pop it right back in now and in the plastic on top and make it weedless. Now that hook right there will kill the way that's set up, it will kill your bait in the water column. And that's what you have. You'll have a worm that'll be up there like that, right off the bottom. And it'll kill. And what happens is you you can adjust your weight too. The thing about these, you can take these with these type of weights, you can take it from however long a leader you want, and you can literally come in and pull it up and make a shorter leader and you can be closer to the bottom. And the fish are going to tell you what they want. They will literally tell you what they want. So typically as the year, as the, as the year progresses, I go higher and higher with my leaders. As the year starts out, I'm, I'm smaller, shorter leaders. Fish seem to be in the pre-spawn. They seem to be more bottom oriented when they're coming up in the zone to, to feed and get ready for the spawn. As they move out, fish will tend to want to be chasing bait and they'll be more horizontal on a um, suspended mode and searching and I tend to bring my and make my leaders up to 16 inches to 24 inches at times it makes a big difference so start out typically I would say on the bottom and keep your leaders short and then work your way up that is a deadly that's a deadly technique that's been out for many years it's made more money. This technique has made more money on, on the plastics and I guess combined with all the other techniques in several many years. Uh, it's been very, very well all around the United States. It's an international technique as far as I'm concerned. Anywhere you go, you'll catch fish on it. How are you working that rig? This typically, uh, again, depends on where you're, you're at exactly. But if you're casting, beginners are going out, they're gonna be making a long cast out there. Pick your target, throw it out, Engage your spool and follow it tight. So you're making sure if you get bit on the downfall, at least you know. And once it hits bottom, you make contact. You have a little bow in your line. Take up any little bit of slack and just hold it there. And this, you always want to keep a rod up a little bit and have a contact. So you got a, a bow in the line or a tight line as well. At least you have contact and you can see your line and have a little bit of tension on it. And then you can shake it slide it shake it slide it and just do that presentation and work it all the way back and then you have to stop occasionally you'll stop and just kind of dead stick it with a tight line and just pulsate it just gently with the rod tip and that little bit of movement right there in water that's all you need to do it's such a natural technique and, and method and fish will go crazy you don't have to really be aggressive in doing aggressive shaking you can take this out there and just be very finessey with it and just work it back slow. You'll get bit from the bank all the way out to the deepest water you can find with this technique. It works in any water clarity, any time of the year, anywhere from the east coast, west coast, I don't care where you're going. This technique catches them. That I can tell you. It's great for the beginners. Kids will like it. I think uh, part of it too with the younger generations moving up and the young kids, as far as the rigging and the methods, that in itself, once they master, they're, they're going to be inspired to learn more and once they master one technique they're going to go to the next and then the next and the next and that's what makes a good fisherman and then uh, you just graduate to bigger bigger baits heavier line depends on where you're going as well time of year so we have those techniques um, the we also did we also could do um, a split shot which we didn't bring I didn't bring a split shot out but a split shot is a really good easy technique too but basically just like the just the idea as the, as the Carolina you basically all you do instead of having a slip sinker you take a split shot and just say for example this is the this was the end of your your line here and you just basically take the split shot in replace of anything else and you pinch a split shot anywhere you want above gently though okay on center on the split shot and crimp it down gently 
don't you don't take pliers and just bury it into it you, you just pinch it down as tight as you can go as long as it's not moving that's fine and you can adjust that uh, wherever you want and then you can create basically a, a real finesse type Carolina rig too that's very deadly as well never hardly use our anymore uh, but a lot of that that originated out here uh, the split shot what sorry I believe uh, Dick Trask was was behind that I could be wrong but that won a lot of money back in the day the split shot here on the west coast was if you weren't split shot in 50 feet of water some of these guys you weren't you weren't cashing checks i mean these guys were killing them in some deep water out here on the split shot these guys were using four and five pound line i was just ridiculous some of the stuff that, we, that happened out here but like i say it goes back to basics now you know you can use this right off the bank here and go to your local park and and and, and do this and i'm you know the berkeley trilene six pound line you could uh, take that line and, and like I say, it's very limp and subtle and there's no, uh, and it's got a pretty good abrasion resistance to it too. So I would definitely, definitely start with that. And also too, your line, make sure you always have fresh line and uh, make sure you have enough line on your spool too so you're not fighting yourself. Some people overfill, they'll overfill their spool, they'll underfill it, but just for the sake of, if this was your spool on your reel, that's about where my finger is and where you want to be from the top of the edge of the lip of the spool on your reel. If you get down below that or you're above that, you're going to be having a hard time casting or you're going to be creating coils off of your line, off your spool by overfilling your reels. And that's what I'm going to tell the kids now out there. Don't overfill your reels. Big mistake. When it starts popping off the reel top, that means you've got too much line on a spinning reel okay way too much line so you need to just make sure that you have that happy medium where it's not popping off and always check your line check your knots uh, abrasion anything that's going on there because one one bite one big fish can cost you i mean if you don't manage your your line and your knots and your tackle here so just follow up on that guys and you'll you're telling me big fish eat this little stuff oh gosh I mentioned before about those little mini shakers and those three inch mini shakers catching teeners at Cascade. But you'll catch giants at the parks on the small stuff. Giants. You know? I mean, I've caught them on the local lakes up here up to, up to nine pounds. Just finesse fishing with a little three inch bait and guys would laugh at me and, you know, I would just go out and just mess around. Didn't expect to catch big fish, but they're in there and they'll still eat the small baits. Bass has, to eat. Bass has to eat, doesn't matter what size of bait it is. If they eat, gotta eat 10 of them to get full, they'll eat 10. If it's one bite, then it's great, less energy for them. So, I think uh, an important message, especially early on, is to get as many bites as you can, catch as many fish as you can, and really start to develop that muscle memory and the confidence to be able to expand on these fundamentals, right? Oh, definitely. And then you can try all kinds of other stuff out there. But don't get overwhelmed by a super badass shop like this with all this crazy tackle. Start with the fundamentals. Get bit. Catch fish. Not feelings. And, and that's the thing. You know, when you walk into any store you go to, ask questions. But try to find a good contact, somebody that is fishing locally here that can help you and guide you in the right direction. And here, you'll find numerous people that will help you and put you in the right uh, direction. And, you, and if you're talking about fishermen here, you got guys that fish here. You know, they definitely fish here and they're gonna tell you and put you in the right direction. That's the key. And, and like I say, when you're young, don't get intimidated, come in. If you got a question, I mean, even if you see me or somebody in there you recognize, ask them, be polite, walk up to them. You know what? Everybody's willing to help because the fact of the matter is, is that you're the younger generation I didn't have it so much when I was growing up, very limited access to whatever we had. But you guys out here now have, besides the internet, come in here one-on-one, -on -one, feel, see it, and you, and you hear it, and you're gonna go home and you're gonna apply it, and, and, uh, and, and then you're gonna have a story to come back and tell the guys, and then that's rewarding for them as well, you know? And then you develop uh, a, a customer uh, relationship, friendship with the local tackle store, and 
one day you might meet somebody that'll take you on the boat you know and that's all just, it's an opening it's opening doors you know for you down the young younger generations to uh, have the opportunity to get out and meet people and and expand yourself and and experience all the other bodies of waters that we have here when you're uh, when you're able to and have that opportunity so that I would I would definitely push forward uh, and and everybody here like I say even Seth yeah, Seth every anybody here I mean to be honest with you Mark you got Mark you got Joe and these guys fish freshwater salt water and I'll tell you what how many times did you fish this week this week three animal it's only Tuesday is it? Yeah, it's only Monday. How is that possible? Saturday. Okay. His week starts Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> His week starts on Saturdays. Okay. I was up late at a Lauren Hill concert last night. Excuse me. I don't know what day it is. Excuses. Okay. But cool. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, man. Um, pretty solid. Brings back a lot of memories because all three of those. Oh, actually, the drop shot didn't really come into prominence until uh, in my teen years. But the Texas Carolina rig split shot, that's what I did, man. Four inch worm. That was the deal. Had a lot of them. And some good ones mixed in. Clear water, dirty water. You know, one thing I want to mention really quick that I left out, I'm looking at here. Yeah, one of those fancy the, beads. Is the bead. And the bead, to be honest with you, I left that out completely. But the bead. Where did they do with that leader with this? There it is. Okay, so what I'll, I can tell you with this, and I'll do it a real scale, quick deal on that. The bead, um, I'm not going to open the bag, but you slip the bead on right above the barrel, right? So you put the bead on the barrel, and then open you... Open the bag, let's see what it looks like. Okay. This is, the, this, is, this is the deal how it protects the knot. It protects the knot, and it also creates a clicking noise. And it and attracts the fish too. It does two things: protect what? protects your knot, and it also clicks against the weight in between the weight and the barrel swivel. And I'll tell you, it, it's 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 money. This right here is this is this is what I did for many many years up and down the west coast, western United States, and that's it. So what do you mean by it clicks? That, this, this movement, when it's banging like that. It's a really that, subtle click. And that clicking, that little clicking is, and, and crawdads have a, a little clicking sound to them too when they're foraging going down in the rocks and stuff and with between their claws and, you know, they're very hard. So they're in there foraging in there and that clicking and like for example this is to your rod tip here so your bait would be your bait would be down here <clears throat> okay that's where it would be <clears throat> so that in itself right there is 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 the finesse carolina rig right there so that's what i left out earlier but i would recommend to put that little barrel that little uh, glass bead there it's a still relevant technique today you know dave deluca has um had a lot of success recently on a Finesse Carolina rig. You know, it's 2018. Still oh, doing work. I'm glad he's watching my videos. <laughs> Shout out to you, Dave. What's up, Dave? What's happening? Yeah. All right. Just the rattles. So you got some beads. I, I mean, we're looking at a tackle selection here, probably around what? 30 to 50 bucks maybe yeah you know pretty affordable you got multiple options here colors and you can tackle uh, pretty much any condition yeah this will cover a lot a lot of bases um, as far as that goes you can fish a lot of different types of cover between those three four techniques oh yes depth it doesn't matter what depth you're fishing it'll work nice well if you guys find success doing this Give a shout out to the Bass Jesus himself. Comment below. What do you guys want to see? Got it, boys. We're gonna we're gonna start from the bottom. We're gonna go all the way back to the top and in between and uh, you know old old techniques, new techniques on the water in the shop. Going places no one else has gone.
going into space. That's crazy. I'm going to put a bass boat on the next rocket. <laughs> what do you think? Hey, everybody dreams. Why not? <laughs>